Welcome to Creatively Christian, a podcast by Theophany Media, where we inspire, inform, educate, and empower creative Christians of all types. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon Hollingsworth. Today, comedian, actor, and show host Maurice Brown joins Dave Ebert to talk about overcoming rejection and sharing faith in the entertainment industry. And welcome back to the Creatively Christian Podcast. I am Dave Ebert, now joined uh, remotely from Austin, Texas. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, comedian, actor, uh, show host, uh, one of the co-stars in the 2016 film Love Different with Anthony Hackett and yes. uh, Jen Gotson Chandler. Uh, please welcome Maurice Brown to Creatively Christian. Maurice, welcome. Hey. Oh, hey, thanks for having me on the show, Dave. It's great to be on the other side of the uh, microphone here as I normally host our Breaking Down the Four Walls. Thanks for having me on the show, Dave. Uh, it's an honor, man. And uh, you've been incredibly busy. Um, as we record, you just recently got back from the International uh, Christian Film Festival mm -hmm. where you did some stuff for 24 Flicks, recording interviews and things. Um, so you're a busy man and you're in high demand. Um, I guess the first thing I want to talk about is because it's recent, Tell us what uh, uh, what the ICFF was about and, and the things that you were doing down there. Well, the International Christian Film Festival is a, a, a festival that honors some of the top work done in entertainment by Christians, faith-based entertainment. And uh, you have an opportunity to meet people like Kevin Sorbo and Cameron Arnett, uh, Jen Gotson, just to name a few, just a ton of uh, top entertainers in the faith-based world. And and it's it's really the Christian version of the Oscars, quite frankly and honestly, done by Marty Jean Louis. And you got to give him a lot of credit because yeah. this is the 10th year anniversary and he started small and look where he is now. And, and the sky is the limit. Like this thing is becoming the real deal for faith-based entertainment. And yeah. so again, I, I it's like the Christian Oscars. It's the biggest film festival not only in america but in the world more than likely for mm -hmm. christians when it comes to entertainment awesome and you got a chance to talk to some uh pretty uh big and rising names uh doing some interviews down there uh who are some of the names uh that you got to speak with and how can we find those interviews so anthony hackett uh, jen gotson kevin sorbo kat vasquez and her husband george vasquez uh, Melissa Goad, who was on our show, uh, Breaking Down the Four Walls last night. Uh, Tasha McFarlane from Australia, who has a film out there called Zarephath. I had an opportunity to uh, interview her. Uh, Elias Kimwell, who was in Family Camp, along mm -hmm. with Gigi Orsillo and Tommy Woodard and Eddie James from The Skit Guys. Um, uh, I did mention Anthony Hackett. I think I mentioned Anthony. Yeah. Uh, I had a chance to interview him and... Uh, so it, it it was a lot of people that I, I had a chance, some of which I, I can't even remember some of the names <laughs> of Orkley right off. But I interviewed so many people that were actors and, and directors in the faith-based world. And I, I, Anesh Daniel, who uh, who uh, produced the film The Graham Stain Story, the one that I talk about quite often on Breaking Down the Four Walls, an amazing faith-based film, yeah. Graham Stain's. A, an American missionary from the early 1900s who went to India to transform a leper community because in the 1900s, in the early 1900s, there was no cure for leprosy in that region of the world. And he went over there with the sole purpose of leading the lost to Christ. And uh, he never caught leprosy. Hmm. They executed uh, Mr. Staines and his children for yeah. spreading the word of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was on Pure Flix for a while. It was called The Least of These. The Least uh, of These. I got to see these with Stephen Baldwin. And, yes. Um, uh, I think Sherry Rigby uh, is who played his wife. Yeah, Sher movie. Sherry Rigby is also the wife. Yes. And it, it's a phenomenal film. Uh, it will play with your emotions and it will um, kind of pull back the curtain on what it is to be a missionary. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not just about going around and smacking people with the Bible. That's not what you do. You go and you build the relationships and you show through example who Christ is. That's and right. 
I think Graham Staines did it very well, and uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend the movie uh, The Least of These. Um, so, th- so that's great that you got uh, d- to go down there. Are you about to say? No, I, I was going to say uh, we don't realize what real hard work in in the field is of of, of Jesus Christ is is really about in America. You know, we've got everything that we want and some more. And I'm thankful. I'm, I mean, I thank God that I was born an American. But at the same time, as a Christian American, you know, when you see films like that, it makes you understand that you know it's time to roll up roll up the sleeves more. Because you don't have to go to India. You don't have to go to Zimbabwe. You don't have to go across the water to lead the lost to Christ. They're right here in our own backyard. Yeah. There, there, there's so many homeless people out there, lost people out there that live in the streets. And that that's a mission field. Yeah. You don't have to leave the country. Exactly. And in all honesty, sometimes our mission field that the Lord's calling us to is our own family in our own house. Um, so you Absolutely. don't have to. You don't have to go to India, but if the Lord puts it on your heart, then uh, then go do it. Go and uh, bring the word. So, um, yeah, that's a great movie. Uh, now, let's talk about you, uh, Mr. Maurice Brown. Uh, tell us about how you got first into to comedy and then into acting. Well, it's interesting. I, I used to be a radio announcer back in North Carolina back in the early 90s. And my uh, manager thought that I was pretty funny on the air. And, and he, he kind of dared me to go do an open mic at Charlie Goodnights in Raleigh, Nor- uh, North Carolina, which one of the it's one of the top comedy clubs on the East Coast. And so I was like, oh, wow, I never thought about doing anything like that. Um, what the heck? I wrote up a set and they only picked four people to do this open mic and 20 guys showed up and I got, I got picked. I was one of the mm. four. And so I was like, man, I, I can do this. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I still didn't press after it. I, that was in 1993 and I came back in 97 and started at it again. Quit when I met my wonderful wife. I said, ah, who needs comedy? <laughs> so I married her. <laughs> and, uh, in 2010, we opened up a cafe in Manassas. And in order to bring in business, I started doing comedy again. And I said, you know what? I don't think I'm going to leave this time. I'm going to stick with it and see how far God will take me. And there you have it. So you went from that. And then uh, uh, in 2016, uh, we talked. I uh, mentioned that you were in Love Different. How did you make the le- leap from uh, live comedy to acting and to being on film? So in 2013, I, I, I found out about this agency called Actors models and talent for Christ. Yeah. And so I I don't know if you're aware of AMTC or not. Yeah. But I uh, decided to go to one of their conferences and uh, you know one of their schools and during that time I found out that not only could I be a comedian but I could also be an actor. There are other ways that, that to spread the word of Christ in entertainment outside of comedy, you know, through acting, through um, narrating, uh, you know, you could be a newscaster, you could be a sportscaster, so, so, yeah, things that I did when I was in North Carolina. Anyway, long story short, I uh, I just kind of started submitting auditions, and I won Love Different 2016. Anthony yeah. Hackett saw my audition. He picked me, and it's amazing. You know, first time out, I won it. And um, But this is a game of no's. Yeah. I, I ex- fully expected that I would be doing one film after another, and I haven't really been able to land anything since then. Still at it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just you got to stay in this thing. God has it all mapped out. He just needs you to stay with it. So what do you think, uh, some of, talking both comedy and acting, I think you kind of touched on it, is, you know, receiving the no's. What are some of the other major obstacles or hurdles that, that you have come over uh, since, uh, since entering into entertainment? Well, I, I, I would I would start with comedy because you know comedy you know there's a lot of bombing involved, yeah, and it takes a ton of intestinal fortitude to keep doing it. When you realize that, you know, that is one of the most unpleasant experiences that you could ever have, and when you get to the point where it kind of rolls off your back like water off a duck's back, 
then you start to kind of hit another gear. Yeah. Um, and you just, yeah, you care, but you want to succeed more than you care about failing. And, you know, you just, you just, because it's so exciting. Yeah. Stand up, it's it, the whole environment with the other comics and the performance. Hey, man, this is it. It's on. The lights are on you, man. You got to go. Th that's exciting. I love it. Yeah. And most people think it's crazy. But, it, you know, if you it, it's some and, and we're wired differently, we're, we're crazy. You know, entertainers are crazy anyway. Dave. We're not like everybody else. There's something different about us, man, yeah. that makes us tick that does make most people tick you know we we just are wired that way so yeah i mean after a while when you get over the failures you know you just realize it's part of it you accept it and it makes you stronger yeah. you know absolutely uh, with acting you said it's a a lifestyle of no's um, yeah, yeah. what what are things that you do to pre prepare and to overcome the no's to be ready for the next one um, I, I think you just have to just understand that you want it. This is something that you love to do and you're not stop it. I don't care how many no's I get. I'm not quitting. I, I don't care how many times I get on stage and bomb. I'm not, I'm coming back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a done deal. I mean, that's, that's a no brainer. Um, and, and so after a while, I know for the comedy part of things, the bombings decrease quite a bit. And then you're kind of like, man, I'm 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 fairly decent here. I mean, I don't really bomb very much. Every now and then, it's it's always in play when you're a comedian. It's always in play, right? <laughs> I mean, you go out there and you can really bite it. It get happen, right? <laughs> but it doesn't happen as much. Um, acting is not quite the same vibe for me. It's like. Mm -hmm. You know, the no's come and they come. It's like, man, when am I going to break through? And you just kind of keep doing it. But it's a labor of love, which is, you know, parallels to comedy. I just think that as, as a comedian, it helps me as an actor mm -hmm. because your skin becomes brazen to know or be, yeah. not being accepted. You know, you just you, you just got to keep doing it because you made your mind up that you got to do it. Yeah. Now you, go, you don't like me. Well, I'm coming back tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll see what happens then. You know, I mean, you just have fun with it and, and you do get better. Yeah. You, you absolutely get better and stronger. And uh, so I've, I've transferred my feeling for comedy to acting with de in dealing with the nose. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I, 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 I'll, and, and it helps that I did break through first time out in love different in 2016 with yeah. Jen Gosson and Tommy Ford from the TV show Martin from the 90s. Yeah. I mean, my gosh, you can't ask for too much better than that first time out. Right, exactly. So I know that the ability is there. And, you know, it's just a matter of understanding that you have to keep weathering the nose. And then you get to a point down the road when you become really successful at this thing that you now you've got your foot firmly planted into the industry where – you know, there there are actors out there now that don't even have to audition. They just show up. That we want, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want you, yeah. Uh, Denzel. So anyway, it, it you know, you just just have to. Number one, you just got to trust Christ and keep going. He, he's the one that tapped you on the shoulder, and you said, "Oh, thank you, Lord," because hey, I love this. He built you to do this stuff. You don't even know why. We don't even know why we love it. Well, Christ built us this way. So to, we go by faith. To quote the uh, prophet Lady Gaga, I was born this way. <laughs> there it is. But uh, the, the next question is, uh, you, you brought up faith. How does faith and your creative pursuits, uh, um, we didn't even talk about uh, your shows yet, uh, as far as like your virtual shows, but how does faith intersect with these different projects you're in? Uh, is faith a separate entity or is it? does it inform everything? How does faith intersect with, with what you do? Well, faith is everything for me. I mean, as you know, doing breaking down the four walls, um, 100% by faith, it's about getting the word of Jesus Christ out. When I do my uh, podcast where I interview faith-based entertainers, I'm focusing on faith-based entertainers, people that love the Lord, 
do what they do for the Lord in the entertainment and, and industry. And I want what they're doing to get out there for others to be aware of. These people need visibility. I want people to know who they are, what they're doing and how they can see what they're doing because they're repping Christ. Um, and, and of course, I have a sports show uh, from time to time. I'll do an NBA show during the NFL season. It was pretty regular. But again, even within that, it's Christ centered uh, as I operate from that standpoint. Obviously, it's a lot less because we're talking about sports, but there's no cussing on my show. Right. I'm not going to entertain profanity with guests on my show, whether it be one or three other guys. They already understand this is going to be a godly representation of our opinion. So mm -hmm. we're not going to go there. And uh, you might hear Christ dropped in once or twice, even though we're talking about LeBron or we're talking about Tom Brady, whatever. So, but those shows are intended to be holy as well. Um, and so uh, that's, those are the four shows that I have going right now. But uh, I also will do online comedy from time to time. I'll, and I'll do that in the secular world. Uh, but I'm doing clean comedy. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not using, I might be with a bunch of guys that are, or, and gals <laughs> that are using profanity and talking about some pretty low stuff, but I'm not, but it's also a way for me to witness to them. You know, uh, when I go out and do comedy in Austin, now that I'm settled in comedy, as I get back into it, you know, I'm going to be in a showcase with a bunch of secular comedians here in a few weeks. I'm going to be the only clean comic. You know, that is a way to minister the word of God. I, I, I you know this uh, story, Dave, but I'll share it with the audience for those that may ne may never uh, may have never heard the story. I was doing a show in a secular room and there was a heckler there and she was mm -hmm. so wicked. And by the time I got up there, I thought, well, boy, I'm going to get lambasted. She didn't say a word. She came to the front, sat right in front of me, didn't say a word. And I thought it was really odd. Got mm -hmm. done with my set. I had a good set. And then later she said, your set made me think about how bad my life is. My husband is physically abusing me mm. and I'm in this situation because of my choices. Thank you for your set. And I thought, wow. And, and here I am in the, and I actually changed a life by standing for Christ by just being clean. Yeah. Just it, by being were, clean. You weren't preaching the gospel. You weren't intersecting or inserting you know, John three sixteen in the middle of your, no. your set, it, you no. were just bringing the light with you. You were the gate through which Jesus entered the room and she recognized it. It was amazing. I, and that's, that is the most significant experience I've ever had as a follower of Christ in the entertainment world, in that environment where I go out and, and do comedy in those rooms, like mm -hmm. mind blowing. It's like, wow. Okay. God, I am in the right place. And it's one of the situations that's very similar to the, um, the quote that's uh, uh, attributed to uh, St. Uh, Francis of Assisi, where he said, you know, I, I always preach the gospel. And when I have to, I use words. That's kind of a loose quote. Well, you know, in the film um, that Anesh Daniel did uh, regarding the Graham Stain story, there was a statement made by uh, someone, an, an Indian, and he said, it wasn't anything that he said. It was the look in his eyes. It mm. was the love. It's amazing. Yeah. It's not words, Dave. It's action. People yeah. can feel love coming from you. Yeah. And they can feel it through something as as simple as a comedy set that's not preachy. It's not, hey, this is the word. This is what you need to believe. But the love you have for Christ and the love you have for his people and his children his lost children that comes through and that's what speaks to people because um it's not the words it, it's the love it's the passion you can have the greatest words it's uh the first corinthians 13 where it talks about yeah i could speak uh with all knowledge and the angels and this that but if i don't have love then i'm just a clanging symbol and so people can hear the difference between the clanging symbol and somebody speaking from a place of love that's right. That's right. And people respect you a lot more in that in that world. You know, I've I've garnered tons of comedian friends in the secular world where 
Actually, I, I, according to my wife, I might have too many, but <laughs> <laughs> what? I think that the friendships come from respecting where you stand. They know that I'm not going to go there. Yeah. And yet we've been able to build good friendships. Have you ever run into a situation where you felt like you're, you're surrounded by people that are not Christian. They don't know where you're coming from. Have you ever felt the need or the desire to, to go to their level and maybe go a little bit further than you normally would? as far as like content or innuendo or anything like that? Uh, you, you mean as far as comedy goes? Right. Yeah, there there, there have been some 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 struggles on my part. I'm, I'm certainly not perfect. Uh, and I've been intimidated a few times in certain rooms. Uh, I will say I've never, but I, I've never gone to the expletive uh, barrier. I, I, I've never gone to the profanity, but I've been in situations where Hmm, how should I put it, Dave? I, I'm the type of comedian, although clean, I'm willing to push. Uh, you remember, uh, I, I wanted to do a special last year. Michelle Van Duza came up with a great title for my special, and she said, call it Pushing Boundaries. And I'm going to take her up on that. Whenever I get a chance to do my special, that's exactly what I'm going to call it. Because I think some of my comedy is controversial. And I'm, I'm, you made an, a reference to crushing some toes on the show yesterday. And, 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 I, and I, for whatever reason, I'm kind of fearless in attacking certain subject matter. And I think I've offended some people. I'm not going to lie without cursing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've offended some people. And um, at the same time, I've actually. So anyway, that being said. <laughs> That being said, I was able to get a lot of laughs in those moments and you just walk away and I go, did I tell the truth or did I just intentionally go to the wrong side? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I told the truth. And I, I and I can walk away feeling OK about it, you know, but at the same time, I've, I've ruffled some feathers be, because of telling the truth. <laughs> I just flat out tell the truth, Dave. I'm yeah. sorry, man. And, and it's funny. And I think yeah. one of, and I'm, I'm going to say this now, you just, I'm going to get a little <laughs> soapbox and then I'm going to get off. I think one of the biggest problems in the Christian community is the refusal to be real. Yeah. Being real doesn't mean you're being profane and inappropriate. You're just telling it like it is is and you're making light of it it's pretty darn funny if you get off you're holier than thou horse yeah and i and that bleeds over into faith-based entertainment quite frankly and honestly i love faith-based films but the faith-based world needs to also understand we can get a little bit deeper here yeah we we can dig in a little bit deeper guys i believe we can and to Melissa Goad's uh, credit, who was on our show Breaking Down the Four Walls last night, who got an Audience Choice Award for a Christian horror movie. Nobody's ever heard of that, but she was willing. And so uh, that's kind of where my comedy is. It it mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it can be edgy. It, it can be edgy. But I can walk away feeling good about it because I go, I say to myself, <laughs> okay, I'm going to say one last thing and then... You can ask your next question. I have a joke that I tell about the African American youth of, of our country. And they love to use the N word ad infinitum. I mean, it's part of their language. And it, 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 the NFL made it a rule, a penalty, if it were used on the football field. I did not know that. Yeah, they, it, 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 was, it was a very understated rule that they employed. And, and, that, and a lot of people don't know that. But long story short, I kind of made a joke about it <laughs> because you got all these middle-aged referees out there, Caucasian middle-aged referees. And that goes for the NFL, the NBA as well, particularly, where that, those guys are saying it all the time, and they're kind of like, they're like a tennis ball. The balls, the, the words like a tennis ball. <laughs> They're like, what do I do with this word? You know, and so they made it a penalty and so forth. And I and I just kind of go on and on. But the the joke's really funny mm -hmm. in clubs because that there's there's way more to the joke. I'm not going to get into, and it's really funny in clubs. But my wife didn't like the joke, and she said, "You know what, honey? 
you're making people happy with that joke. And she's from Brazil too. So she doesn't totally understand the culture, sure. but I, I, that joke is like 95% hilarious in just about every room. I, I do this joke in. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to stop telling that joke because people like the joke. And the point is for people to laugh and you telling the truth, keep telling it. Nice. So, yeah. And I, I think that that's a major point that Christians need to do is the Bible is full of stuff that is not comfortable. It you is. Had, you essentially in Genesis, you had two daughters rape their dad. How about that? Uh, in the Song of Solomon. Hey, uh, that's, you know, maybe not for Sunday school, but, you know, that that's in the Bible. That's real. Uh, there, intimacy between husband and wife, that's a real thing. And we should be, you know, we should be careful what room we tell it in. We don't want to go into the nursery and start preaching on the Song of Solomon. But we should, but we be, should be able to have an adult forum where we can talk about this stuff and, and exactly. laugh about it. You go to Nahum chapter three and God's talking about raising your skirts over your head so everyone can see you. Mm -hmm. Hey man, God, God doesn't, he doesn't mince his words, Dave. Just right. read the Bible and you, I mean, you'll start to understand. God gets down to the grits, man. And, and, and so I just find it, you know, hard. And you don't, and when you don't walk away from the Bible feeling dirty, God knows yeah. how to tell it and you still feel clean. Oh yeah. man, I love it. Exactly. There's grit to, rea to life. There's grit to uh, reality. And we shouldn't be afraid of grit. Uh, until uh, uh, Melissa won the award for the horror film, yeah, there are some Christian films that are out there that they're they might as well be horror films because they're that bad because we're trying to do that Hallmark <laughs> movie. Um, yeah, yeah, you're um, right. I, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. And, and and listen, I love pure flicks, and I love a good faith based family film. I do. I I, I, I you know. But at the same time, that we, we don't seem to want to get deeper as well. Like, okay, but we also need to get into some of these other things out here, too, that's happening. So we can really touch some lives out there. And, and you know, I think we forget where we can. You know, like, God pulled us out of the muck and mire. It wasn't pretty where God pulled all of us from. All of us he pulled from the muck and mire. Exactly. And so we don't want to forget that. You know, we weren't born holy. You know, and so how are we going to pull out those others that are in the muck and mire right now if we're not willing to be real with them? And they can smell inauthenticity a mile away, yeah. disingenuousness, and they they won't listen to you. And here's something that I learned from pro wrestling is you want the good guy to have the crowd in the palm of their hand. But right. you can't do that if you don't accurately portray a really strong villain. If the right. heel is somebody that's a pushover, is dumb, is this, and it, then, then the good guy doesn't look good. So when you're telling faith-based yeah. stories and you're trying to tell Jesus the good guy, you've got to be willing to tell who the enemy is and tell right. the truth about that. And right. you can do that creatively and through suggestion in a way that doesn't require uh, vulgarity or doesn't require nudity or things like that. You can be real without being profane. I was, I was, I told half of the joke, one of the jokes about the church on our show yesterday when, you know, people say, I got saved when I was eight years old. <laughs> well, what crimes and misdemeanors did you commit yeah. at eight years old? That's what I've tried to say. That dirt you threw a Mary Jane, I think God's okay. See, it was when you were 22. Right. When you, when you took that bong hit from Hades that you thought you'd never come back from and God brought you back. That's when you got saved, yeah. <laughs> okay? You know, and, and, I, and I, I'll, I'll say things like that, you know, on stage. And, and it's always the Christians that get mad. The people in the world, they love it. The Christians are the ones that get mad because they're guilty. Yeah. My gosh, come on, man. <laughs> get real, man. Let it go. I mean, you're saved now. Dust yourself off and relax. <laughs> Unfortunately, the truth of the matter is there's a little Pharisee in all of us. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, so uh, 
you've uh, you've got the uh, the show. It uh, comes on uh, your Facebook page. Uh, what uh, inspired you to do? Because uh, you've got the sports show, you've got the breaking down the four walls, and then you have just uh, uh, interview shows with uh, different guests in, in the Christian entertainment. What uh, what spawned those, and uh, what do you uh, have you seen any like fruit from them as far as like reaching people? Well, it, it's interesting because I started it before the pandemic. I would literally go to a comedy show with a camera and a mic. And I would pick one of my comedians out to to do an interview with. Then I would film their set. Then I'd have them film my set. And then I'd have my son edit the show and I would put it out. And I did that. I got about 25 shows like that. But it, it became such a chore. It's like, I just couldn't do it, Dave. It was just too much. And, and so I just started focusing on just performing. And then the pandemic hit. And, I re- and then I realized, oh, now I can do that show. Yeah. Now I have nothing but time to focus on that. And that's what spawned it. And uh, I've been going ever since with it. I've probably got three to 500 shows, something like that. I got a bunch of shows uh, that are a lot of which are playing on Roku TV on the Creative Motion Network. Uh, those shows at this point have not garnered anything uh, financially for me. I'm trying to get sponsorship. Uh, I'm trying to find a way uh, how to get it to the next level where it can be, you know, a, a show of monetary value uh, up to this point. That, that has not happened. I uh, am seen regularly on uh, KCHF TV in Albuquerque, New Mexico, every Saturday night at 8 and 12 midnight. Um, and so they they like the show a lot. And the, the uh, manager of that TV station wants to you know, push it across the country. He thinks that there's a shot for breaking down the four walls to be a thing. Uh, So that's in, you know, you know, I've been on their station for maybe the last seven to 10 months, something like that. So we're, we're working on that. God's got something planned, Dave. I can feel it. So as we wrap up, uh, what, uh, what can uh, people do to help uh, support you? Um, do you have a Patreon or do you have a way that they can financially support? Uh, what what ways could uh, people support uh, what you're doing with comedy and with the shows and things like that? Well, what you can do is go to my website at mbecomedy.com and you'll see everything that I do in the, in the way of comedy uh, as far I don't haven't done it since the pandemic. That's one of the things I'm praying about is to get back to producing family-friendly comedy shows with some of the, the funniest comedians you've you've ever run across. And a lot of people don't know who these Christian comedians are because we're not seen out there enough. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I want to get back to producing those kinds of shows. Uh, I'm also doing, as I just mentioned, podcast on the Creative Motion Network on Roku TV. Uh, those shows are done live on Facebook and YouTube. I'm also a part of Pizzazz TV. That's a, a, um, a Roku TV type in London hmm. that contacted me last year. So I've been doing some work with them as well. Uh, that's PizzazzTV.com. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, and so that's that's basically what I've got going. I do four uh, different types of podcasts. And I try to do them weekly. I never miss a week with breaking down the four walls. That's that that show I feel is straight up for Christ. Yeah. And I make sure I do that every week. So uh, but those are some ways you, I'm on Instagram at Maurice Brown Comedy Hour. Uh, also on Facebook at Maurice Brown dot one six one. And uh, I'm, all, I'm on Twitter, Maurice Brown on Twitter. And um, so and uh, I'm also on uh, LinkedIn. So. Those are some ways you can follow me. Awesome. So everyone, uh, check out Maurice uh, at uh, on Instagram at Maurice Brown Comedy Hour. You also find him online at uh, mbecomedy.com, Maurice Brown Entertainment uh, And if uh, that's all you remember, just go to that website and uh, that'll link you to everything else. Uh, Maurice, uh, I love being a part of uh, Breaking Down the Four Walls. Uh, such a cool community because we got people from sometimes from California, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Tulsa, mm-hmm. Oklahoma, Florida. Yes. Uh, so all over the map. And like I said in, in the prayer before we started, 
it's so cool to see technology, which is often used for negative things, for advancing the kingdom of, of darkness. Yeah. See yeah. us take a little piece of that land back and use it as a way to draw people closer to Christ. Well, I totally agree. And that's it. That's the thing about it. You know, it's, a, you know, people have branded social media as being of the devil. And, and that's true. The devil has taken a strong hold of technology in lots of different ways. But guess what? We as people of Christ can, as you accurately stated, take some of that land or a lot of that land back because it's not of the devil. If you use it effectively as a follower of Christ, it can be huge and we have to take advantage of that. Absolutely. So Maurice, as we wrap up, uh, would you mind saying a quick prayer for our listeners, for those that want to step maybe into comedy or into other gifts and talents and uh, just uh, pray over them as we wrap up? Let's do it. So Lord, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving, and we do pray for all of our brethren and sisterin that are involved in faith-based entertainment that have a heart for you to get the gospel of Jesus Christ through the gifts that you've given us in entertainment, whether it be in comedy or film or screenwriting, uh, acting, directing, uh, producing, whatever it may be, Lord, give us the, the, the wisdom to do it your way. And the right way, because you're very explicit in your word. But when we walk away from your word, we feel clean. And you, you've given us a blueprint in how to present truth. So let us open up our hearts as to how we can do that uh, more effectively in the entertainment world, how we can touch the lost and bring them home uh, for people like Dave Ebert and uh, Felicia Frazier and Melissa Goad and Todd Terry and Dallas Jenkins and you know, uh, Michael Jr. and Tim Allen, uh, Jeff Allen, I mean to say, and the, the list goes on and on and on. So many people of light in the world of entertainment that want to do it your way. I pray, Lord, that you will embolden us, embolden us to do it as effectively as we possibly can, Lord, on the highest level that we can reach and bring people that are lost home to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you, everyone, for joining us on the Creatively Christian Podcast. Uh, we will talk to you soon. Have a great day and uh, have a blessed uh, rest of your summer. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening today. To get all the resources and links that were mentioned in today's episode, please visit our website at theophanymedia.com forward slash brown. To support the show and join our patron community, where you'll get extra access and exclusive content, visit us at patreon.com forward slash creatively Christian. Creatively Christian is a product of Theophany Media. You can find out more at theophanymedia.com. This show is hosted by Brandon Hollingsworth, Andrea Sandifer, Dave Ebert, and Rachel Anna. Our logo is by Bill Brooks. Bill Brooks and Andrea Sandifer did our music and Jake Dobrins produces and edits the show.